welcome once again to the studio and today we're going to be taking a look at the mute groups um, this is a feature that can be found on your program edit when you launch your or when you put up put on your archive mpc device which, whichever one you're using the torch the live one the live two x it actually can be found on your program edit so i'll go to the program edit and explain that interface then we'll be taking a look at them one by one the features and what it does one by one today's video we're going to be focusing on the pad mute we're talking about the mute group and how you can set that up for the purpose of this training we're going to be making use of the mpc trap kit 5. it's got basically um, all you need to just walk through a training process like from end to end that's why i like to use it I, there's no need to make it complicated we just have to make it as simple as possible for you to understand so you can apply that to your own everyday production um, workflow. Let's just dive into the program edits. I think that should be uh, press and hold your menu part 14. You will jump straight into the program edit and this is what you have right here. So I'll be explaining from left to right of the screen and you can actually just follow through. Uh, some of them I will not really just go into them in detail we have another video that is dedicated to those ones because of the kind of things they do because like i said earlier we are much more concerned today about this mute group what it does and then we'll take a look at this poly and you know all this poly basically what it what it does for you when you are trying to set up your workflow so let's start from here basically you have masters right what masters is trying to tell you is that anything you touch here affects everything as far as your part is concerned on this particular track so if you change your semi your semi basically is your tune if you change your tune or you alter your fine tune it will basically affect everything all the output that is coming out from the particular track that is it means all parts are going to be affected now just so you know we have poly here and it's asking you how do you want me to play if you scroll with your jog wheel you see it's got mono and then after that we have numbers i think from 2 to 64 let's try let's check that out 64. yeah from 2 to 64 that's it now what this basically means is it's trying to ask you a simple question um do you want the sound to be poly or you want it to be mono and in the essence what it's trying to say is if you select poly you are basically saying i want all my parts to be able to play simultaneously like they can play on top of each other right now i want them to play on top of each other basically that's what you're saying so let's say let me try let me check something out. this is a clap okay this right now this is kind of like an open heart when i strike the open heart and the closed heart the closed heart still played while the open heart is still on and then when i i think this should be some somewhat of, okay like now do you hear that? So when I even pressed on this sample, maybe like an alarm or something, and the siren, and then I hit the, the open heart, the two of them played together. That's what Poly does. Poly simply says, I want everything. So maybe it now depends on the kind of music you're trying to make. Maybe you are, you are playing live and you don't want your beats to be, you don't want your parts to be um, caught, to be choking each other out. Like, okay, immediately when I press one, I want the other one to go off. That is when you have to use mono. But if you say when I press part 15, I still want parts, I still want any other part I press to continue playing. That is when you are actually talking about using poly. So, but if you do, if for example, let, let me let me try this now. So you, the earlier we did this, we press it. You can see it still continues playing. Now let's change this to mono. Did you see what happened? So this actually Part 15 that, we, that I, I first hit, the event, um, part 8 actually choked it out. It's basically just cut it off from continuing. And that's basically what mono does. But this affects the entire part, which means... So it affects everything on the part. But if you do not want that to happen, you know, you will say, I, I still want some, some of these parts to be able to play while some can choke each other out. They can basically mute each other. The I think that choke. If you are using uh, maybe machine and some other um, sampler, that is, they are the ones that use that choke. 
but on your MPC device, majorly they, they, they call it just mute groups, and that is what you have here. So, as you can see from top here, you have your master. You can see master on top of that place, which means anything you do here, like I said earlier, affects your master. But to the right of it, sorry, to the yeah, right here, we're talking about pad. You see, after master on top, you have pad A4. Then after pad A4, you're talking about maybe simultaneous play or mute target. This pad A4, it simply means any change you make to the level, to the layer play, to the sample play, to the polo, or poly or the mono or the mute group or the pan will only affect or impact this pad 4. So if I strike another pad, you can see it's changed to pad 8. And now it simply means anything I do here will only affect that particular pad. Now, this is where mute group comes in. So we have to come back to the masters and change it back to poly. That means I want to set this thing myself manually. I want to set the mute groups manually. I don't want all of them to just choke each other out. A typical example is you trying to make a beat. We've said uh, you need to at least try and make sure your beat has some elements of uh, reality, you know, be being realistic in it anytime you're trying to make a beat. A good example, you cannot hear a, an open heart anytime a closed heart has been pressed. That is just not possible when you are, do, when you are playing a live um, instrument, that is when you are playing a live drum set. Open heart, closed heart, they cannot come together. One has to shut the other off. This is an open heart. This is a closed heart. But because this is in poly, if I strike the two, the two of them still plays together. So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to say, when I strike this open heart, when I strike this, it should cut out the close. And then when I strike the closed heart, it should cut out the open heart. That will make my beat more realistic. Because I'm unable to choke this out, this is overlapping on this. Simple. What you do is press on the on the particular pad you are trying to mute, and you can easily just come to the mute group and give it a mute group. Let's say one. I think for your mute group, you are allowed to set a mute group from one, maybe like to like thirty something. Let's check thirty-two. Yes, fine. So you can set a mute group. You can actually group your pads from 1 to 32. So you have 32 different groups that you can actually put your, your pads in different mute groups. And don't forget, what we are seeing now is pad 1 to 16, right? But we have bank A to H, which means that is kind of like 16 times 8. Did you get? So we're talking about maybe something in the range of 128 different pads that you can actually attain from your bank A to H, and then you have 32 mute groups for it. So let's say I want my closed heart and the open heart to choke each other out. Once you stop the other, that's what it means. Once you mute the other. While I'm on pad 8, I set the mute group to 1. While I'm on pad 4, I come back and also set the mute group to 1. What that means now is they are both in the same mute group. Whenever I strike either of them, they will choke each other out. You can actually up join more than it doesn't really mean it, it has to be just two you can join more than two three four you can join as many parts as you want to any specific mute group and those are the ones that we choke each other out if you uh, check out if you set up any other um, uh, parts maybe like group of parts and you put them on another mute group they can only choke or mute any other parts in that same group so now because both are in mute group one now hear how it sounds did you hear that? So basically what, what we're trying to say now is I've defined these two. I've used the mute group to set the mode to mono instead of poly for these two. That I've just set the, as, you know, mute group one. Now, talking about this poly that is also here, it's asking if it's poly or mono. What basically it's trying to say is for this particular part, do you want it to be able to cancel it itself out as well? Or when I strike it continuously, should it continue to play endlessly? Like if I strike it four times, should the four uh, um, event also play repeatedly like that? Or if I strike it four times, 
the fourth one will be the one to cut off the others and the fourth one is, is, is the last event. That's the one that we hear. That's why you are hearing that now because it's on mono. For you to understand better, let's go again to this, um, to the, to this siren. You see, you are able to hear the whole of that because for this siren is on pulley. Let me take this on a little bit so you can actually hear it better. Now, it's on pulley. Did you hear that? Everything that I'm pressing just keeps coming up. But if I change this pulley to mono, this is like just the last one. The last one is the one that actually dominated the entire flow. Every other one that was pressed before the audio previous event, everything stopped. It caught. So this is just to ask you, can, can I also choke myself out? And then you can also specify how many number of times I think it runs from yeah. the same 64. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, 64. Basically, what it means is if we say, if I set it to maybe two, it means no matter how many times I strike it, only two of the entire event will play out, will play to the end. The remaining ones will choke, will choke each other out. So let's try that. Let's, let's tap it three times. You see, only two of them played out. The, the, the first one got cut off. But if I take it back to mono, it's only the first one that plays. This one is also a mono. That's why you're able to hear just one. If I change it to poly, the two of them actually play out at the same time. So let's take it back to mono. So that's just basically what um, I'm trying to explain by the poly or the mono on the pad itself. And then the mute group, this is basically, like we said earlier, this is why we are here. We're just basically trying to explain to you that you can actually make more realistic beats when you make proper use of your mute group to stop anything you don't want to stop. A good example, um, if you heard Candy by um, 50 Cent, there is a particular um, snap that kind of like is muting the entire beat. It just mutes everything. I take you to the candy shop. Da, 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 da. That particular snap just takes it off. So you can go listen to it. You see how the mute group is actually being properly utilized in those kind of beats. So you two can, you know, do the same here. Just try and play around. We're going to take a look and talk about the other segments in um, subsequent videos. Just don't worry. Stick around. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And um, we'll see you in the next one.